Wart Bean turns the spotlight on Monte Carlo, one of the most colorful speedways of the world. Here in this playtime capital of the Mediterranean, the spectacle of racing motors whizzing around the hairpin turns of city streets is like a tonic to the thrill seeker. The most hazardous sport in the world, automobile racing grips drivers and spectators alike. It's the lure of the unexpected, for on the speedway, anything can happen and usually does. In Africa, the Tripoli Grand Prix was once one of the most spectacular events on the international sport calendar. Over roads built by Italy's popular real fated Balbo, racing drivers came from all over the world to test their skill for the governor's trophy. Urban natives find a curious delight in following the duels of the white man's great streamlined juggernauts. No camel of the most faithful ever fled across desert sands with the speed of these benzol belching behemoths. Peacetime Europe, once the scene of the biggest, most elaborate road races to be found anywhere, lured hundreds of thousands for the Continental Grand Prix. Over hill and dale, through forest and glen, the experts send their metal monsters at breathtaking pace. But all the credit goes to the pilots. In the tire pits, wheels are changed with teamwork that's a marvel of efficiency. Every second counts. Boy, wouldn't you Sunday drivers like to whip them off and on as quickly as that. Perfect coordination between pit crew and driver, and again they hit the road in this mad, merry whirl of speed and more speed. Even the cameraman takes a chance getting close-ups of these babies. Look out, brother, that's just a sample. And still they come. The winner of this classic is a national hero. No place for amateurs here. The speedways for experts only. England's famous Donington Park. Today, bombs instead of sportsmen's motors shatter the peace of the picturesque countryside. Only engines of war have the right of way now, and England looks to the day when all this will return. You've heard of hitting the high spots? Well, keep your eye peeled on these leaping leaners of the speedway. In America, the dirt track is the meeting place of the speed demons. In old horse parks, at county fairs, anywhere there's a mile of oval track, the throttle pushers have a field day. Typically American, prize money's the big lure here, with a bonus for the daredevil who sets the pace. Lap after lap, it's a merry-go-round of dirt and dust, and how nerves can stand the strain is nothing short of a major miracle. Stripped of every non-essential part, the cars tear around at better than a hundred miles an hour. Push out in front and stay there is the only rule they know, and boy, that's just what they're doing. Jamming into the home stretch, and the traffic something terrific. Converted stock jobs or racing specials, it's every man for himself, and the head man in this grease derby deserves all he gets. <laughs> The midget racers have their own speedway. Like five to 750 pound jobs, they develop up to 120 horsepower and can do two miles a minute on the straightaways. Fast and hot, they're a handful to manage. Powered with outboard motors of tiny racing engines, they're the doodle bugs of the dirt tracks and every bit as thrilling as their big brothers. Many a veteran got his start in them. Personally, we'll take the stops. Uh-oh. Phenomenon of 20th century publicity, 
the Great American Soapbox Derby is the only thing of its kind anywhere in the world. Here on a specially built speedway all their own, American youngsters in homemade contraptions sail down the thousand-foot incline for the glory of the old hometown. Age limits 11 to 15, speed limits 35, and some do it. Luring huge throngs to each annual derby, the Soapbox Classic is becoming a national institution. Yes, even here they sometimes crack up. Nothing serious, though, and on they go toward the grandest prize of any track, a four-year college scholarship at the school of the winner's choice. That, boys and girls, is a bonus worth working for. On the salt flats of Utah, where the toughest tires are torn to shreds, the most powerful land vehicles ever conceived come to pace the measured mile over the finest natural speedway in the world. England's Captain Easton and Sir Malcolm Campbell, America's Ab Jenkins. Here's where they all come to seek man's enduring quest for speed and more speed. From the official control tower, the captain gets the word, and away he roars in his seven-ton thunderbolt. Eyes glued to the black guideline, he shatters 60 records in 48 hours. Set a record today, and tomorrow somebody comes along to break it. Sportsman John Cobb in his ice-cooled Railton Red Lion. His goal, 369 miles an hour, better than six miles a minute, and believe it or not, he does it. Even the camera plane can't keep up with Cobb, speed king of the world. Best known automobile race in America is the 500 mile whirl around the two and a half mile brick paved speedway at Indianapolis. 30 to 40 streamlined organauts pacing the track in search of a modern golden fleece. The official car pulls out and the thundering pack roars away for the chase. A $100,000 purse. Men will do a lot of things for $100,000, and these men earn their money cheating death at every turn. Many have been killed, but the sinister throb of powerful motors and burning oil is in their blood, and they must go on. Sometime during the four-hour grind, each car must go to the pit for refueling and tires. Even the best of rubber can't stand this pace too long. Faster than European cars, American racers are built for terrific sustained speeds. Floyd Roberts established the record in 38 and died next year trying to break it. Feet jammed against floorboards, they challenge the laws of time and space. Tense and expectant, the morbid throng senses that this is the pace that kills. Lady Luck's charm is not riding today, luring them on to the Valhalla of racing kings. The speedway takes its toll. The motor world salutes them. America's pioneers in the world's greatest race for speed.